This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You may be seated. Today marks an important moment in the life of Girls Preparatory School, in the life of today's graduates and their families, and in my life. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and student body, it is my honor to welcome you to the 112th Commencement Exercises of Girls Preparatory School. Today is a day of celebration, but our celebration must be expressed as a reflection of the reverence this academic ceremony deserves. Please do not mistake our being in a gymnasium as a reason for any of us to be raucous or use noisemakers to express our pride for this class as a whole or for individual graduates. While it is appropriate for us to scream and yell on our bruisers to victory, or to call or to text those not present when we are usually in this place. I ask that you not engage in this type of activity in this moment. Please be fully present and enjoy this once in a lifetime experience for the 102 young women before you today. The ceremony is being videotaped and will be available via our YouTube channel next week. We have plenty of photographers who are here to capture these moments, so you can focus on enjoying our time together today. I ask that each of you please take a moment and make sure your mobile devices have been silenced. Even if you think it is silenced, I ask that you please check to make sure your devices are silenced. Also, if anyone needs medical assistance during this morning's ceremony, there is an EMT and ambulance outside of the gym in the front circle. Member, a member, members of the graduating class will offer our opening and closing prayers. We encourage you to join in the choral responses after each prayer. Those responses are found in your program. Please stand as Liv Libby Wellborn comes forward to offer our invocation.
If you are standing and would like to have a seat, there are a few spaces on the bleachers over here, and I will pause for a moment to give you some time to make your way over there. all of us assembled to visually see how this class has come to be. In the fall of 2011, 64 of today's graduates were the rats of the class of 2012. For those of you who started GPS in the sixth grade, please stand. The following year, nine joined this class for seventh grade. For their final year of middle school, five become, became part of this vivacious group. With the start of high school came the addition of 17 new classmates. Three girls came to us for their sophomore year. And the sisterhood was made complete with four enrolling in the 11th grade. I now present to you the 102 women who will go into the world as women of integrity and with purpose, the Girls Preparatory Class of 2018. While each girl has pushed herself academically, and we can learn from each student in some way, there are some whose academic achievement sets her above and beyond many of her classmates. 44% of you are wearing a blue cord today to indicate your membership in our National Honor Society. Would you please stand to be recognized? each girl's strengths and nurturing 
each girl's self-confidence and respect for others, either through their work in the classroom, on the stage, or on a court. The girls are inspired to be their best selves. This work cannot be done without those who make sure our buildings are clean, the fields are lined, the lunch is cooked, phones are answered, students are admitted, messages are crafted, and money is raised and spent on our program and our people. It is the faculty and staff who give so much to make GPS the transformational community that it is. Would my colleagues please stand as we thank you for your contributions to getting our girls to this moment. It's a role that I quietly assume when tears well up in my eyes when I see the strength and grace of a dancer or the profound call to action that a senior's chapel talk speaks to my heart. It's a role that I relish when I see a girl falter and her classmates help her up, dust her off, and encourage her to press on. It's the role I take when I respond to an email from a community leader who is just blown away by the insights, hard work, and kindness our students exemplify in our community. It's the role of proud mama. So I'm going to brag on my girls right now. Yes, that's right. I'm going to be that mom. You know, the one you avoid at Publix because she knows she's going to exaggerate about something that her child has done. I'm here to tell you, my 102 girls are truly amazing, and sharing their accomplishments really isn't bragging. It's speaking the truth with no marketing spin or fake news. These are just Ten of my girls are going to play sports in college. Since studies show girls who play sports in high school or college are more likely to be C-suite executives in a Fortune 500 company, I see before us high power executives in our future. Speaking of business, several of my girls have their own businesses, a tech support business and a calligraphy business, just to name two. One is a published poet, and you can buy her book on Amazon.com. Our best, one earned best delegate out of an entire model UN conference. Speaking of international diplomacy, these girls are ready to navigate the complex issues of our world because they see value in speaking other languages, Spanish, French, Burmese, and Japanese. 
Six girls received commendation from the National Merit Scholarship Program, and another four were National Merit Semifinalists. One is following the steps of her dance teacher and going to dance at her teacher's alma mater. Several of my girls have done bench research with a UTC chemistry professor as part of the professor's research agenda. This connection was made through one of our trustees. My girls are leaders in this city. One sits on the Habitat for Humanity Selection Committee for New Homeowners. Another is on the STEAM Girls Advisory Board for Tech Town. We have members of the Mayor's Youth Council and the YMCA Youth Trust. And one of my girls has a seat on Khan Academy's SAT Student Board. This class serves in other ways too. From Erlanger to Glenwood Elementary, to mission trips to Honduras, Swaziland, Uganda, Nicaragua, and the Philippines. My girls make a difference in communities near and far. Part of what drives their desire to make a difference is their passion for social justice, equality, and service to others. This call to service is influenced by their minds, hearts, and religious faiths. They're also very willing to walk their own path, and not the path that someone else thinks they should travel. I think this is best evidenced by one student who has never had any social media accounts. And these are girls who enjoy challenge, and this, in that it's fun, clearly. That has to be the mindset of one of my girls who's able to solve a Rubik's Cube in under 14 seconds. <laughs> there are times when people ask if GPS girls have exposure to the real world. Will they be able to make it in the real world? I just rattle off a few of these accomplishments working with, leading in, and serving people in the real world. As evidence that my girls do more than just make it in the real world, they excel. And then there are those who raise the question, is GPS really worth it? I could go on and on about the strength of character my girls possess, their ability to fail forward and stand up bigger, better, faster, and stronger. Their ability to be friends with other women and see them as not as competition, but as fellow collaborators. Or I could just present the quantitative facts. 87% of this class was offered merit, talent, or athletic scholarships. That's not need-based financial aid. That is scholarships for their academics, talent, and athletic ability. That equals just shy of $12 million. And because my girls are able to be selective, they've chosen to accept $5 million in scholarship funds. So you see, GPS was founded to be a girls' school. It is a girls' school, and it will continue to be a school for girls. The intentionality of our approach to inspiring mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual development, coupled with parents who value education, parents who value integrity, parents who value curiosity, and parents who value hard work, together we make GPS the school that inspires each girl to reach her highest potential. Here's to you, the girls, my girls, of the class of 2018. Following the musical selection by the GPS singers, we will hear from our student speakers without further introduction.
The GPS class of 2018 stands out for many reasons. We are currently the largest class at GPS. We sat in a circle and signed each other's yearbooks during our freshman year, and we dressed up as the 101 Dalmatians and Cruella de Vil together for this past Halloween. But in a broader sense, the class of 2018 is unique in that we are some of the first high school graduates who were born in the 21st century. Some of the first born into an age with widespread use of technology and a spirit of progress and advancement. Our class fits the spirit of our time well. We are bold, enthusiastic, energetic, and ready to walk through these doors and be groundbreakers. A famous passage in President Theodore Roosevelt's Citizenship in a Republic speech reads, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who, at the best, knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who, at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Roosevelt's words illustrate a truth in life. The only way to learn and achieve anything is by doing something, regardless of our fear of failure and criticism. And so we have a choice to be either the complainers and inactive people on the sidelines, or the people who dare greatly. Our GPS education has been a reflection of these words. Upon commencement today, the diplomas in our hands will call us to be people who act and serve the world around us. Because at some point along the way, we have likely seen a classmate or teacher who was like the man in the arena right before our eyes. Someone who demonstrated what true devotion and hard work are really like. And perhaps we also had an experience where someone or something convinced us that we too could step into the arena, that we had the abilities to lead group projects, to inspire a young child in after school tutoring, to serve a sports team in a new position, or to create amazing works of art. For me personally, it has been my peers and teachers at GPS who compelled me to action and changed my outlook on failure and success. When I first walked into the GPS Friars and Theater as a sixth grader in my Navy uniform, I was an 11 year old who was convinced that easy routes were the best. I relied on ideas from textbooks and teachers so that I would never have to risk making mistakes with my own ideas. Thankfully, early on, my classmates and teachers inspired me, and they taught me that there is something wonderful and human about being wrong and taking risks. Because of GPS, I know that admitting I don't understand a physics concept or sharing my nascent interpretation of a novel are roads to learning. Without taking risks, I would never have known if I was wrong, grown from my mistakes, and become an independent thinker. After all, there is no effort without error. The 102 members of our class have had the blessing of being in our own GPS arena, striving valiantly together through a myriad of struggles and achievements. Along the way, we have had the comfort of knowing that our fellow classmates were working early into the morning at the same time as us, struggling on English and math tests like us, and crushing games and performances together. Although we'll never do those particular things together again, our class will always be cheering for each other as we go our separate ways. I am thankful for my classmates who have shown me that I don't have to be afraid of asking difficult questions. 
and who have never let the fear of being wrong prevent them from learning. Thank you to the teachers who devote themselves to giving us the gift of an education and who constantly raise the bar higher than we would set for ourselves. I and the rest of my class are thankful for our families and guests today who have lent helping hands, listening ears, and unconditional love on this journey. Our time as GPS students is coming to a close. For some of us, this is a day we've waited for since our first days here. Our time as GPS graduates is about to begin. Today and every day forward, we have the opportunity to be like Roosevelt's man in the arena, to find purpose in worthy causes, to dare to learn more, and to show compassion in the world we live in. Our class is talented, confident, and kind, and we are prepared to dare greatly. My hope is that we continue to find and surround ourselves with people like our teachers and friends at GPS, who challenge us and encourage us to see the world differently. The people who lift us up as we grow into the people we were meant to be. I hope that our class serves the people we meet in college and elsewhere in the future in the same way that we have helped each other here at GPS. So, to my family, my teachers, and especially the entire class of 2018, I want to thank you for filling my days at GPS with enthusiasm and a love of learning, for being a class with a unique sense of compassion and camaraderie, and for creating friendships that we'll always be able to return to in the future. I wish you well in all your endeavors. I love you and will miss you guys so much. Thank you and congratulations, GPS Class of 2018. Forced us to practice grouping documents about it for our essays without any of our knowledge of the topic. 
In chemistry, we had to skip over material that our teacher enjoyed teaching just because it wasn't included in the curriculum and the exam gave us a strict schedule to abide by. I'm not saying I would never would have taken an AP class. I've enjoyed them, but it's time to redirect my efforts. By the time AP season, AP exam season rolls around, I never felt a sense of mastery and contentment from my work. The AP curriculum forced us to wade in the kiddie pool in order to meet the deadline instead of jumping in the deep end. Learning should be about making connections and planting your feet in the world and finding what you're passionate about, not about scraping your material together to pass an exam in May. And I stand by what I say, which is why I'm skipping my AP European History exam today to focus on things that are more important in life, like graduation. In my mind, there's an hourglass that I reset each year counting down to those exams in May. But there's another hourglass seven times bigger beside it that's been keeping track of my time at GPS. <coughs> Seniors talk about how scary it is that our days are remembered. In reality, starting in the sixth grade, we're given a limited amount of time that we shouldn't take for granted. After seeing the time that my two sisters spent here fly by in the center of the week, I've always been aware that my days left in the uniform were fewer than they seemed. Too often, we go through the funk through the perfunctory emotions of the school day, mindless of the sacrifices made to get us where we are, and forgetful of how great this place is. I know that feeling of disappointment when you realize it's Thursday, not Friday, and the feeling of resentment when a paper due on Monday drops like a bomb on your weekend. But those feelings will fade away when you consider the fact that 264 million children in the world don't have a school to attend, and here we are in one of the best private high schools in the state. We're extremely fortunate to have our school, but early mornings, late nights, and all the formulas, essays, and lab reports in between are only a fraction of what the word education encompasses. This is the education that's given to us, but there's also the education that we seek. I'm talking about curiosity and initiative and growth. It's our job to ask questions so that we can learn about each other and the world we live in. Your education isn't put on hold when you walk off of campus, and it's not complete once you've graduated. The classroom lecture is only one way you can learn. I read a book about the misconceptions of Islam and has to be a less coherent friend. I downloaded an app to start learning Japanese to better connect with my mom. I found that the smallest steps can be rewarding because when you embark on your own educational pursuits, your lessons will take on a domino effect. One Friday early last year, I checked out a documentary from the school library about the Constitution. Later that month, we covered the formation of the American government in English. Soon after, election season came, and I could actually understand what David Green and Stephen Skeet were talking about on NPR. Learning enriches your life more than any material thing can. Relationships are cultivated more deeply when you understand a person's roots. Listening to the Hamilton soundtrack is more enjoyable when you actually know it went down in the room where it happened. Learning gives you shape. We can stand more firmly behind our beliefs if we really understand the differences and similarities between them and those of our peers. The world is too vast to live inside a hermit shell of one perspective. And here before me are 101 different perspectives. The girls are what makes GPS so valuable to me. Turning side by side as exponentially to what we can take from the classroom. I'm sorry, Miss Gordon, but I'm not going to lie. I don't remember much about the curve cycle from your candidatures. I do remember how Ansley Jones and I made a chicken egg swell to the size of an ostrich egg through osmosis. I remember in Miss White's room when Nikki, when friendships were tested, when Nikki and Meg argued over Mr. Darcy. I remember being stunned by Claire Hand's obscene knowledge about Greek mythology and a trade English. The same class in which we each memorized either Romeo or Juliet's part in the balcony scene, but Kendall McCann whipped out the whole thing from memory in Mr. Wall's class this year. <laughs> I remember being taught by Lily Hopping what it means to be a bruiser in a middle school shape in field hockey and water polo. And how could I forget the time, in Dr. Cavino's class, when he forced Mackenzie Jennings to count out before him like he was a Chinese emperor. <laughs> Every high schooler says their high school is the best. GPS is better. <laughs> Where else do girls look forward to BC Capitals every day? Your neighbors are what make learning so memorable, and they will teach you infinitely more than a text. Discussions with my friends at lunch trade what I learned in my old religious class to new depths as we speak of seven different religious backgrounds. Yes, the majority of us here at GBS look similar, but nonetheless, there's plenty we can learn from each other's perspectives.
schools are so valuable because they provide us with the greatest resource, people to learn from, both teachers and peers. So what is my education worth to me? It's well worth losing it because I was asleep and the big fist full of hair. It's worth the stress acne and the sprints from the language dungeon to the map hall. My access to education is a privilege that so many have fought over with words or violence. All the trivial things I've considered a bother in the past are a privilege. I've done nothing to deserve the opportunities given to me. I was only born in the right time at the right place. My education is worth everything put into it, and it's my responsibility to prove that I'm worthy of my education by being appreciative and learning for the sake of learning. So to further my own education, I'm learning how to say thank you as often and in as many ways as I can. Merci, gracias, danke, arigato gozaimasu, thank you. And now, the class of 2018, please rise. Madam Chairperson, Holly Lynch Harwell, Class of 1984. On behalf of the faculty and staff of Girls Preparatory School, I present to you and your fellow trustees this class of 102 women who have found their voice, know how to use it responsibly, and who have, who are, have been inspired to go out into the world with purpose and integrity. These young women have met all of the academic requirements for earning a diploma from this prestigious academic institution that values honor, respect, curiosity, individuality, and relationships. Graduates, please move your tassel from right to left and turn your ring to have the crest outward facing. And now, head of Girls Preparatory School's Upper School, Janice Gordon, will present each graduate. In keeping with tradition, we present diplomas first to the Senior Class Leadership Council. Chairwoman, Reagan Elizabeth Lamb, University of Alabama. <laughs> Khadija Sohel Aslam, Fordham University.
Amira Hanib Bhatti, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. McCall Amelia Waldrop, Samford University. Gabriella Giselle Adazme, IE University, Sejovia, Spain. Mary Margaret Aerosmith, Davidson College. <laughs> Patricia Maddox Bandy, Lipscomb University. Sophie Caroline Becknell, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Lillian Grace Berger, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Mia Elizabeth Rickefort Bertani, East Tennessee State University. <laughs> Anne Marie Bonadio, Auburn University. <laughs> Micah Monet Boykin. Washington University in St. Louis. Carly Ann Brayman, Georgia Southern University. Mary Ellis Bratcher, University of Texas, Austin. Darby Elena Breedlove, Savannah College of Art and Design. Mary Pearson Brown, American University. <laughs> Avery Elizabeth Campbell, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. <laughs> Quinn Madison Selahowski, Belmont University. Mary Grace Kaufman, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Sierra Ann Cooley, Tennessee Tech University. Lydia Nicole Cochran, Lee University. Elizabeth Gwendolyn Day, Reinhardt University. <laughs> Megan Nicole Delaney, East Tennessee State University. <laughs> Eliza Grace Diamonditas, Gap Year World Race.
Jaden Rainey Dome, Fordham University. Jamisha Chantel Dunnigan, Claflin University. Ellen Poindexter Edwards, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Joyce Ann Irwin, Lipscomb University. Maggie Elise Esslinger, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Taylor Nicole Floyd, Tusculum College. Mackenzie Lauren Frizzell, New York University. <laughs> Hollis Elizabeth Gaffney, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Lily Clayton Glover, Samford University. <laughs> Hannah Nicole Goldbach, Drew University. Augusta Ham, Brigham Young University. <laughs> Sophia Mo Han, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. <laughs> Catherine Tift Harrison. Auburn University. <laughs> Abigail Parker Hepwood, Hollins University. <laughs> Margaret Parks Hill, Auburn University. Hannah Lynn Hopkins, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. <laughs> Lily Alexandra Hopping, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Blake Hardwick Hoskins, Marymount Manhattan College. <laughs> Eliza Lee Jackson, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Mackenzie Louise Jennings, Auburn University. <laughs> Ansley Briar Jones, College of Charleston. Lila Murphy.
Murphy Jones, Washington and Lee University. Hannah Jane Kinser, University of North Carolina, Greensboro. <laughs> Carolyn Lamb Klein, Wofford College. Sandra Page Lambert, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. <laughs> Hannah Hinako Lamon, University of Tampa. Margaret Stacy Lim, Duke University. Ashley Rose Lynn, Lipscomb University. <laughs> Mary Catherine Keeper Marston, Rhodes College. Margaret Peterson Marshall, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. <laughs> Blythe Avery May, Lake Forest College. Lauren Brooke McCurdy, Maribel College. <laughs> Maddox Grace McIntyre, University of Arkansas. Kendall Jewel McCoon, University of Georgia. <laughs> Maher Nimmin, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Amanda 
Helene Michaud, Ohio University. Phoebe Agnes Sinclair Mills, Swanee, the University of the South. <laughs> Rithika Deviash Modi, University of Miami. Emma Grace Moore, Huntington College. <laughs> Emma Kathleen Nash, Montreat College. Anna Mackenzie Oglesby, Salisbury University. Jordan Victoria Paulden, Savannah College of Art and Design. Catherine Rebecca Peel, University of Mississippi. <laughs> Emily Michelle Peoples, University of Delaware. Julia Christina Piccolo, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. McKinley May Pitts, University of Kentucky. Olivia Sierra Plunkett, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Tatiana Regina Ledesma Hoji, Tulane University. Alina Valerie Poston, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Prescott, University of Alabama. Stella Jane Pritchard, Swanee, the University of the South. <laughs> Ivana Danielle Robinson, Samford University. Anna Noel Salisbury, Berry College. <laughs> Reagan Mackenzie Sanborn, Boston University. Lynn Schlegel, College of Wooster. <laughs> Anna Blair Cameron Self, Auburn University. <laughs> Lily Morris. 
Zajin Shire, Mitchell College. <laughs> Megan Ansley Sykes, Lee University. Charlotte Elaine Smith, University of Mississippi. <laughs> Haley McKenzie Smith, Tennessee Tech University. Reagan Elizabeth Smith, University of Georgia. <laughs> Corinne Hendrick Spann, Texas Christian University. Elizabeth Stamey, University of Alabama. <laughs> Catherine Sarah Thiel, University of Notre Dame. Neil Elizabeth Thomas, Samford University. <laughs> Daphne Jane Thomas, Texas Christian University. Cecilia Ann Turner, Mississippi State University. Andrea Carla Vandemerva, Belmont University. Miranda Bays, University of Chicago. <laughs> Leela Beeson von Kessler, University of Georgia. Jaron Landis Wagner, Belmont University. <laughs> Abby Grace Marie Walden, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Shelby Lynn Walters, Duke University. <laughs> Elizabeth Houston Welburn, Wake Forest University.
Alexis Jean West, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. <laughs> Lindsay Hannah White, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Congratulations, ladies. It has been our honor and privilege to watch you grow into the amazing young women before us today. We all look forward to learning of your future endeavors as you progress through this world. Now it is your turn to step into the arena. Remember to always be bold, be courageous, and be your best self. Please stand as Meg Marshall comes to offer our closing prayer. After the choral response to the prayer, please remain standing for the singing of our alma mater. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together today to celebrate the class of 2018. As we finish our time here at GPS, we thank you for the guidance you have provided that has brought us to this day. You have blessed us with teachers, friends, and mentors here and we praise you for the role they have played in our growth. I pray that you would give us security and peace as we leave this school that we have known and loved for so long. Though this community can never truly be replicated, I pray that you would provide similar support and friendship as we move to the next step in our lives. Lord, please continue to strengthen the sisterhood we have been a part of. May we continue to celebrate and love one another, even if it is from a distance. Continuously remind us of how unique and special this school is and stir gratefulness in our hearts for having the means and opportunity to have been a part of GPS. As we leave this place, entering a world full of brokenness, guide us to be your hands and feet. Equip us, as we have begun to do here, to love, serve, and lead others well. May we always be filled with the hope your Son has provided. Father, guide each of our decisions as we leave this moment in our lives and into the next. Thank you for all you have provided us and all you will provide in the future. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank uh -huh.